It is the era of the internet rating, when you pick a spot to eat, a place to stay, or just about anything else, there's a good chance you first look at the number of stars. Heck, when you buy a tube of toothpaste, you can find a rating for the paste, a score for the specific pharmacy selling it, even a measure of what it's like to work for the pharmacy. But how are all these ratings determined? In a lot of cases, it's not as simple or transparent as it seems. That's what we discovered when we looked into Yelp, which is probably the internet's most influential rating site. Business owners have been caught paying for favorable ratings. Yelp says they've developed an algorithm to screen out fake reviews. But a lot of business owners say what Yelp is really doing is extorting them for advertising money. Tonight, we devote our entire show to that Yelp filter, one of the invisible algorithms operating in the background of our online lives. First off, just how much do these ratings matter in the real world? Consider the fate of Dr. Beauty NV, Elaine Prestoris' electrolysis spa in Northern Virginia. Just a year ago, her offices and her scheduling chart were filled with 75 patients a day. This was my typical work week. Today, the calendar is mostly empty. So now, this is what my work week this week looks like. Prestoris says the fall off is easily traced to her Yelp page, which today gives her a dreaded one star rating. At one point, she actually changed the name of the business. It was originally called NV Electrolysis and Laser Center, but the Yelp ratings followed her to the new name. And it's not just individual customers who might be scared off by the low rating. Deal companies like Groupon and Living Social that drove so much of Prestoris' business will no longer work with her. I signed a contract with Groupon about a month ago to run a deal, and they're not running the deal because of the reviews. We were standing in one of the empty rooms she vacated as her staff shrank from eight to just her. Do you think your business can survive with a one-star review? No. You're basically closing your company mm -hmm. because of these Yelp reviews. Yes. Set aside for a minute whether Dr. Beauty is a good business or not, and just consider the power of that Yelp rating, a couple hundred pixels on a web page on which the fate of small businesses can rise and fall. And many of those business owners say Yelp wields that power unfairly. Here's one small example. Look at this. In Chicago, the first review listed for Norm's Automotive Clinic isn't for the shop, but because Norm doesn't advertise with Yelp, it's for a competitor who does. Same for Sapino Pizzeria in Detroit, whose page highlights an ad for Green Zone Pizza. When you go to Green Zone Pizza's page, because they do pay Yelp, there are no competitor ads. But like we said, that's just a small example, one Yelp doesn't debate. It's something else, much harder to prove, that gets business owners really upset with Yelp. They are real dirtbags. We were flooded with responses when we asked business owners to share their Yelp stories. You're not going to believe it after 31 years of business what these uh, cowards are doing. We had some very interesting and unpleasant experiences. It's not only I, but I have two other friends that were affected by Yelp. But over and over, they all told basically the same story, a play in three acts. Andre Hopfer of Ava Spa in D.C. illustrates how the story goes. We started having quite a few new clientele because of these reviews. Yelp brought you business. Yelp brought us a lot of business. That's act one. Act two involves Yelp reaching out to the business. And then we started um, getting phone calls from Yelp to advertise with the company. We sort of were very hesitant of advertising with anybody at this point, being a small business and having limited funding. So we declined the invitation of Yelp. How many times did you say they called? At first it was sort of infrequent, and then they started calling on a daily basis and sometimes multiple times a day. Multiple times a day? How long did that go on? That went on for many months. The annoyance of the calls is one thing, but in Act 3 of the story, invariably, things start going badly on the company's Yelp page. The positive reviews started disappearing, and only negative or you know, sort of indifferent reviews staying on our website. Well, help me out with the sequence here, though. You have good reviews, Yelp starts calling, and then in this time where they're calling on a daily basis, you notice the reviews start to change? That's correct. All of a sudden, the reviews are changing and because we refuse to advertise with them. Well, you this, say because. You think there was a connection between those two things? I personally believe so. 
Today, just 24 of Ava's reviews show up. The rest, more than 80% of the reviews written, have been filtered. They're hidden unless you click on this small link at the bottom of the page and correctly type a capture code to access them. So in your view, Yelp is filtering these reviews to get your attention? And to pressure you into advertising. Yelp says that's not the case, and even produced a video explaining the filter. All reviews that live on people's profile page go through a remarkable filtering process that takes the reviews that are the most trustworthy and from the most established sources and displays them on the business page. Yelp says they can't describe the filter in detail because that would allow people to game the system. Our Yelp review filter takes uh, you know, dozens, if not hundreds, of signals and data points into account. Uh, I can't tell you what they all are, but I can tell you what one isn't. Uh, and that's advertiser status. Our review filter does not uh, take into account whether or not one advertises when it determines which content to showcase. Though Yelp insists it's impossible for sales staff to change review filtering, we found one business owner who says a Yelp saleswoman promised to do just that. They actually said that they would unfilter a lot of my filtered reviews. Better yet, she seemed to make good on the promise once he started some small-scale advertising. Magically, like five or six of my filter reviews became unfiltered. As soon as you started paying a few dollars a day. Exactly. And all of a sudden, I was showing three times as many reviews as I was before. But this business owner, like many of the people who contacted us, was unwilling to publicly share his company's identity. Why won't you speak on camera about this? It's because at the end of the day, Yelp has more power to destroy me than, uh, than it does to uh, help me at this point. I mean, right now, I have one out of every three reviews is showing. Does that make sense, you know, that I have two-thirds of my reviews uh, filtered? Does it make sense that once I start paying them, that ratio changes? I have no inkling to ever pay the company, and I am literally paying them money uh, out, of, out of, like, fear out of extortion, you know, I feel like it's extortion. The evidence to support those claims is circumstantial, but Yelp has been fighting them in court and online for years. It's completely untrue. Uh, there's, there is no correlation between advertising uh, and reviews on Yelp, and it's pretty easy for anyone else to see if they'd like to. Uh, you can go to Yelp and look for any business that advertises, and you'll certainly see that they have uh, a few negative reviews that I'm sure they wish they could remove, but of course they can't. Uh, and the flip side is, there are tons of businesses out there with great four- and five-star reputations that don't pay Yelp a dime. Next week, the release of some new research will bring an independent voice to the debate. Mike Luca from Harvard and Giorgio Zervis from Yale have spent three years parsing thousands of filtered Yelp reviews. We have looked through the data based on people who advertise and people who don't advertise, and we don't really see any difference at all uh, in the likelihood of having reviews filtered. So your More research shows whether you advertise or not has no bearing on how your reviews are filtered? What we're able to say is something I would say is slightly less strong. Uh, there could be some very complicated process through which this happens, but uh, to a first approximation, if you look at the sets of restaurants that are advertising, they're getting the same number of reviews filtered as uh, restaurants that are not, not advertising. How then do you explain so many businesses issuing this claim against Yelp? Why? So I think part of what's going on here is just there's so little transparency into what goes into these filters. When we think about what goes into a filter and you're sitting there, you're a business, and uh, you've got 20% of your reviews being filtered, and you actually know that they're all fake because you're not sitting there writing reviews for yourself, it's incredibly frustrating. Pair that with the fact that we have on Yelp side uh, sales people who do go call and try to make a pretty hard sell for why you do why you need Yelp advertising, you can understand why people are making this type of connection.